three years ago. It seems like just a minute ago, and to many of us at New Sherm, it seems impossible to believe that it's true still. Sherman Parker, for many of us that uh, sort of came up through the ranks, was as much a force in the after-hour parties and at the YR happy hours as he was in policy and uh, in Jefferson City. You see, Sherman Parker, somehow it seemed to me, Sherman Parker knew he was living life in a hurry. There wasn't a part of his life, whether it was his daughters, whether it was his political career, whether it was his friends and family, whatever he was doing, he was a man in a hurry. I don't think any of us believed he was in a hurry because it would be so short. I still don't really believe that he won't come out from behind. He would have enjoyed this immensely. He would have enjoyed the friends, the, the, the family. He just would have had a blast. This would have been, if I can say, Chris, an even better night if Sherman was here. He would have made it probably slightly wilder, but more fun, <laughs> but better. Star Parker being here is maybe the perfect person to speak to the Sherman, to Sherman that we knew. Because Sherman never cared much that he was black or where he came from. He wasn't from here, didn't go to high school here. He went around, he just said, I'm going to do something. And when I do, I'm going to do it with force. You know, Sarah Steelman spoke, she, could, she spoke about something. Sherman went hard for reform. It didn't always fit the party. It didn't always fit the playbook. But he cared. He cared a lot. So when you see Star Parker speak, if I can say, the message that we should take, if I can offer one message to double, to, to, to uh, follow on what I think we'll hear from her, is our world, our nation, has changed dramatically, even in the years of Sherman's life. Our nation fought a war on poverty that started in the 60s and went into the 90s when some of the conservatives tried to stop welfare and do welfare to work. The war on poverty, what did it do? It destroyed families. It sentenced people to a life of poverty. It didn't take what we, what we expected, which was lifting people up. Instead, it gave them something and held them where they were. The challenge for us and why it's so fitting that Sherman has a scholarship named after him is to get others out to let others break out. And as we see our state government and our federal government spending trillions of dollars on all sorts of plans, we ought to stop and say, wait, if you don't educate those kids, don't try to save them when they're 18 or 20, because it's really tough. So tonight, in honor of Sherman Parker, if I can say, he was always kind to me. I know many of you experienced that. And I offer a prayer of thanksgiving to God for his life, for Sherman's life, and for this scholarship and for this group, may we charge on and like Sherman would, live life in a hurry, live life with spirit, make a difference, make it happen. He's a great, he was a great character, a great man, live life full. And we miss him, we honor him, and I thank you for having me.